my name is Alexandra McCurdy. I live in Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. Nova Scotia is the easternmost province in the country of Canada, and we're on the ocean. And this is the house that I live in, a big old Victorian house, and we've lived here for 35 years. Come on into my studio. we'll show you some work. Um, on top here uh, is a quill work box made by the indigenous people of Nova Scotia. The ladies, the lady indigenous people, sewed the porcupine quills onto birch bark and sold these boxes to the white man for export trade. And my rendition of those quill work boxes is this box. I haven't actually taken the designs or the icons or the symbols. I've just used my own, so it's not really a cultural appropriation. But I've gotten the, the general shape and the general idea, and these are slip-trailed lines, uh, slip-trailed with um, colored slip, onto a molded oval box, which opens and signed by me on the bottom. Um, women's textiles have always been what's influenced my work throughout my whole body of work and I've been working in ceramics now for 50 years. Um, after this particular body of work, I decided I needed to go off and do more study. I have an undergraduate degree from the Nova Scotia College of Art and Design here in Halifax and I wanted to go abroad so I went to Cardiff, Wales, to the Cardiff Institute of Higher Education I did a master's degree in ceramics there. And while I was there, I learned how to make molds and I made ceramic quilts and I made boxes that looked like weaving. This is one of the examples of one of the molded bowls that I made. And you can see that when I did my thesis, which was about women in craft, traced through textiles, I was able to pick up symbols and icons from the textiles that they had made over the centuries. This particular one is an eight-pointed star, which you actually see in quilts, and you see them in rugs, and they were used by women in their textiles to guard against evil. I've used this particular symbol quite a lot. And the other thing I was doing was I was sewing in copper wire. What I was trying to show there was that the pattern on the outside of a piece is actually the same on the inside. What I was trying to do was to conjure up the idea of a needle going through the pot, coming through the other side, and then going back again and putting that pattern on the back and on the front. Women, and women particularly women, uh, when they look at textiles and feel textiles, always look at the back to see if it's as neat as it is on the front. That's something I've noticed over the years. So this again is slip trailed and with colored slip and fired to porcelain temperature, cone 10. At the same time I was making these covered boxes again with the eight pointed star. They were very similar to a box that's actually in uh, quill work that I own. I don't have it at the moment for you to see. But I was very interested at that point in trying to get layers of lines to try and introduce depth and texture. I wanted people to feel these things with their fingers and see that they actually looked and felt like the quills. Um, the idea of layering lines of slip over one another led me to make the boxes, which we are going to look at next. The boxes um, were, it's a complicated sort of story. Black boxes are found in planes when there's been an, an accident. Um, and it's a way of finding out what happened in the plane to cause the accident. Um, my father was, um, was fighting for the Royal Canadian Air Force during World War II for the Royal Air Force and was shot down in his plane, it was a mosquito, and um, he was missing in action for two years. And if there had been a black box in his plane, it would have been a lot easier for my mother and for me 
uh, to know what had happened to him. So that's really the reasoning behind the black boxes. Uh, they've become very, very about me. They're very autobiographical. Um, I think I'll talk about how we make them, for how I make them first. What I use is a, is a piece of plaster, plaster of Paris, and I tape onto the plaster of Paris um, a layer of cheesecloth and draw the shape that I want onto the cheesecloth. Then I use a slip trailing bottle. Slip, as you know, is uh, liquid clay. And I make fine lines going in one direction all the way across. And then I turn the plaster Paris around and I go in the other direction with the other color. In this case, it's white. And I build up six layers each time, turning the plaster Paris around so that there's enough strength to fire the piece and for it to hold its shape. And that's what comes out of the kiln. Those are fired at cone 10. It looks like weaving. It takes on the texture of the cheesecloth, but the fact that I'm actually layering the different lines in different directions, it looks exactly like weaving. So in that way, I'm continuing my body of work, my entire body of work, being influenced by textiles. So then I have to um, sew them together to make a piece. And it usually takes about 20 sides, because of warpage and other issues, to make one box. Um, <clears throat> I need four sides uh, for the sides, and then a slightly larger one from the top, and a slightly larger one from the bottom, so that they overlap. And they're sewn together with a little piece of wire and a bead to pull the corners together. In this case, it's, um, the, the piece is called Black Box with Shells. Um, I live in the wintertime in Sanibel, Florida, which is a barrier island right off the coast of Florida. And the beaches are covered with these little scallop shells. And interestingly enough, we find the same scallop shells in Nova Scotia. So, because my life is all about the ocean and quite often shells, I thought I would make black box with shells. I made a little mold from one of the original shells and I push in the, in the porcelain and out pops about 15 minutes later a nice little porcelain shell. And those I put on the box as a decoration. They're also inside the box. And you may not be able to see that, but if you peek through that one of those cracks, it, um, you can see the shells in there as well. Um, this piece has been selected to go to the Beaverbrook um, Gallery for a show in the fall, a Marion McCain Contemporary Atlantic Art Show, and it'll be there for a year, so I'm pleased with that. This piece, which is called O Canada Black Box, I made uh, to celebrate Canada's 150th anniversary, as well as to mourn my father's death. Uh, what I've done is I've taken the top, which is like that, and it says, O Canada. And then each side has something from our anthem, which rings and resonates to me. So, O Canada, glorious and free. In that case, it's true patriot love. And um, I've used these little tiny letters, which are rubber, to imprint into the clay when it's rolled out. And then I cover the letters with black underglaze slip and wipe it off so that it makes a nice black letter. And I've done the same thing with this box, which is called Lego Black Box. I've used um, quotes from dogs, sayings like man's best friend. Uh, this one says, it's a dog's life. This one says, a dog's breakfast. And this one says, let sleeping dogs lie. <clears throat> and this is about my dog, which we've just, uh, we've bought a dog uh, for the first time in 15 years. We haven't had a dog for that length of time. And his name is Lego. He has given us much joy <clears throat> and we have welcomed him and he has welcomed us into our lives. 
I do a lot of more functional work, actually decorative functional, um, which is more commercial. So I'd rather have another whole body of work that really supports the whole thing. And these I take to craft markets and sell at galleries, as well as the boxes, but the boxes are more specialized and much more expensive. Um, and an example of them are these glasses, gla um, sea glass bowls. Um, and I collect the sea glass um, on the beaches of the islands in Nova Scotia. Um, we have a boat and we go with my grandchildren um, and collect sea glass on the beaches and bring them back. And then I decorate the bowl, usually with another textile pattern. This is a stitch pattern. Um, and I fire it to bisque firing and then dip it in the glaze bucket. And then I put in the sea glass and fire it to cone five and it melts and I have sea glass bowls. So they, they relate to where I live. Um, so we've got a turquoise one. This is a, a copper copper green one and then a blue one. The blue is very difficult glass to find. It's becoming more and more rare and with recycling being very much topical at the moment, this is a very, very interesting way to recycle glass. Um, but the bad side of that is that uh, recycling is also cutting back on the number of bottles that people are throwing overboard and so the sea glass that we find is getting more and more difficult to acquire. And these are another example of some of the more commercial products that I'm making at the moment. I make a lot of these in Florida. I have a studio in Florida in the garage. And um, they're small. And the reason they're small is because I can stack them easily with bubble pack and bring them home on the plane with me in a box. I declare them uh, part of my baggage. And they're, they're usually safe. They come with me on the plane. Um, customs isn't making a problem with them because they're made by me and I'm bringing them back to Canada for sale. And so um, it's all about the polka dot. The backs are decorated as well as the front. And the polka dot, of course, was worn and is still being worn by, uh, by people. It, you see it on, on umbrellas, on suitcases. It's very, very the thing at the moment and I love the fact that they're very vibrant and these are very very successful as well. Okay. So these are the different degrees that I've earned over the years. I went to Banff, um, the Banff Center of the Arts way back in about 1989 after graduating from the Art College of Nova Scotia. Here's my Nova Scotia College of Art and Design teaching certificate. Here's my Bachelor of Fine Arts certificate. This is my Council for National Academic Awards certificate for my master's degree at the Cardiff Institute of Higher Education. And this one uh, is my uh, certificate that says I'm a member of the Royal Canadian Academy of the Arts. So I have them all on one wall and when things aren't going all that well, I look at those and they make me feel like it's been worthwhile. With onwards ever, backwards never, um, black box with garnets, and um, I think wire. Basically, what, what I was talking about with, with that piece is that backwards ever, onwards, onwards ever, backwards never, is a slogan that the suffragettes used to use in their banners when they were marching. And it was um, a, a call to unite. And if you look very, very carefully, underneath the grills of the box, there are little triangles and the little triangles represent equality. And what they used to do, the suffragettes, was sew things into their banners that were very oblique. They didn't want it to be too obvious. They didn't want um, it to become in your face. They wanted it to be very oblique, very quiet, so that the suffragettes knew amongst one another that this was going on. And I use garnets because garnets are a stone, a natural stone to Nova Scotia, and they're meant to, meant to bring good luck. So I combine those two things in that piece. With black box um, and fingerprints, <clears throat> it's meant to um, bring up the whole idea of the isolation of the artist in her studio, of the isolation of ceramics in the whole world of art. Um, and so the fingerprints are my fingerprints. Uh, I've enlarged them and silk screened them onto the clay. But what they are representing is the 
the feel of being enclosed and claustrophobic inside the black box of being an artist and of being in ceramics. In black box with weaving, um, I was talking about the whole issue of women being the main weavers, except for the group of men that, that uh, actually weave in the north of Scotland. Um, uh, and weaving being what it is that my whole work in the boxes is about. So what it is, is a double entendre. In fact, there's weaving, and then there's weaving, and then there's weaving. And when you look through the little grill, you see more weaving. So it's all about uh, women in craft doing weaving and being relatively unknown for doing it.